Willis van de Vanter April 17, 1859, to February 8, 1941, was an American lawyer who served as an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1911 to 1937. Early life and career Born in Marion, Indiana to a family of Dutch Americans, he received a Bachelor of Laws from the Cincinnati Law School in 1881. He was a member of the Beta Theta Pi fraternity and the Knights of Pythias. After three years private practice in Marion, he moved to the Wyoming Territory where he served as city attorney of Cheyenne and a member of the territorial legislature. At the age of 30, he was appointed Chief Judge of the Territorial Court. After statehood, he served as Chief Justice of the Wyoming Supreme Court for four days, and resumed private practice for seven years, during which he worked for the Union Pacific and other railroads. In 1896 he represented the state of Wyoming before the U.S. Supreme Court in Ward v. Race Horse 163 U.S. 504 1896. At issue was a state poaching charge for hunting out of season, and its purported conflict with an Indian treaty that allowed the activity. The Native Americans won in the U.S. Federal District Court. The judgment was revised on appeal to the Supreme Court by a 7 to 1 majority. From 1897 to 1903, Van de Vanter served in Washington, D.C. as an assistant attorney general, working in the Department of Interior. He was also a professor at the George Washington University Law School from 1897 to 1903. <inaudible> <inaudible> Federal Judicial Service On February 4, 1903, President Theodore Roosevelt nominated Van de Vanter to a seat on the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals created by 32 Stat. 791. He was confirmed by the United States Senate on February 18, 1903, and received his commission the same day. In 1910, William Howard Taft elevated him to the Supreme Court. Taft nominated Van de Vanter on December 12, 1910, to the Associate Justice seat vacated by Edward D. White. Three days later, Van de Vanter was confirmed by the United States Senate on December 15, 1910, and received his commission the following day. Van de Vanter assumed senior status on June 2, 1937, one of the first Supreme Court justices to do so. Although no longer on the court at that point, he remained available to hear cases in the lower courts until his death and presided over civil trials. <laughs> Supreme Court tenure On the court, he made his mark in opinions on public lands, Indian questions, water rights, admiralty, jurisdiction, and corporate law, but is best remembered for his opinions defending limited government in the 1920s and 1930s. He served for over 25 years, and voted against the Agricultural Adjustment Administration United States v. Butler, the National Recovery Administration Schechter Poultry Corp. v. United States, Federal Regulation of Labor Relations National Labor Relations Board v. Jones & Laughlin Steel Corp., the Railway Pension Act Railroad Retirement Board v. Alton Railroad, Unemployment Insurance Steward Machine Co., v. Davis, and the Minimum Wage West Coast Hotel v. Parrish. For his conservatism, he was known as one of the Four Horsemen, along with Pierce Butler, James Clark McReynolds, and George Sutherland. The Four would dominate the Supreme Court for over two decades. He was anti-Semitic but less openly so than McReynolds, who refused to interact with or speak to eventual Jewish Supreme Court Justices Louis Brandeis and Felix Frankfurter. Van de Vanter's interactions with them were non-fractious. His opinion in United States v. Sandoval 1913, held that because the New Mexico Pueblos were "...intellectually and morally inferior," and "...easy victims to the evils and debasing influence of intoxicants," they were subject to restrictions on alcohol sales in Indian country. The decision has since been the basis for Pueblo self-government and protection of tribal lands. Van de Vanter had chronic writer's block—even characterized as "...pen paralysis." And, as a result, he wrote fewer opinions than any of his brethren, averaging three a term during his last decade on the court. He rarely wrote on constitutional issues. However, he was widely respected as an expert on judicial procedure. 
In December 1921, Chief Justice Taft appointed him, along with Justices McReynolds and Sutherland, to draw up a proposal that would amend the nation's judicial code and which would define further the jurisdiction of the nation's circuit courts. Known widely as the Judge's Bill, it retained mandatory jurisdiction over cases that raised questions regarding federal jurisdiction. It called for the Circuit Courts of Appeal to have appellate jurisdiction to review, by appeal or writ of error, final decisions in the district courts, as well as for the district courts for Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, China, the Virgin Islands and the Canal Zone. The circuit courts were also empowered to modify, enforce or set aside orders of the Federal Communications Commission, the Interstate Commerce Commission, the Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Trade Commission. The proposed bill further provided that a final judgment or decree in any suit in the highest court of a state in which a decision in the suit could be had, where is drawn in question the validity of a treaty or statute of the United States may be reviewed by the Supreme Court on a writ of error. Lastly, cases involving final decrees which brought into question the validity of a wide range of federal or state treaties would come to the court by certiorari. Four justices would be required to vote affirmatively to accept petitions, which meant that the court's agenda would now be enrolled by judicial review. The Chief Justice, together with the three justices, made repeated trips to Congress, and in 1925, after two years of debate, the new code was passed. Topic. Retirement and final years Van de Vanter retired as a Supreme Court Justice on May 18, 1937, after Congress voted full pay for justices over 70 who retired. He acknowledged that he might have retired five years earlier due to illness, if not for his concern about New Deal legislation, and that he depended upon his salary. In 1932, five years prior to Van de Vanter's retirement, Congress had halved Supreme Court pensions. Congress had temporarily restored them to full pay in February 1933, only to have them again next month by the Economy Act. Van de Vanter was replaced by Justice Hugo Black, appointed by Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He died in Washington, D.C., and was buried there in Rock Creek Cemetery. His gravesite is marked by a stark Van de Vanter. Nothing else which tops the family plot at the turn of the century Willis Van de Vanter purchased Pate Island in the Woods Bay area of Georgian Bay in Ontario Canada He owned it until it was sold about 1939 to Senator Dennis T Flynn of Oklahoma City He and his wife Dolly enjoyed their summers in an area that was a favorite summer retreat for members of the American legal fraternity Willis Van de Vanter was a keen sportsman who enjoyed hunting and fishing. Van de Vanter's personal and judicial papers are archived at the Manuscript Division of the Library of Congress, where they are available for research. <laughs> See also